If you had to pick just one island to escape to in the Hawaiian archipelago, Oahu has it all. From the cultured capital Honolulu, where ukuleles and hula delight, to historic sites memorializing Pearl Harbor and depicting Hawaiian lore. Out to the waves where you can stand in enchanted awe of the people who first thought to ride them and still do. This is the gathering place, the heart of Hawaii, for sampling the aloha spirit on Oahu. Aloha! Aloha, I'm Carrie. Welcome to Oahu. Though Honolulu is the capital of Hawaii, Oahu was not the first island discovered by the seafaring Polynesians over 1,500 years ago. Different kind of culture, it's fast and upbeat, yet a little laid back with the aloha spirit, of course. Let me throw that in there. Oahu is the gathering place. It is very overpopulated and commercialized, you know, but for, for good reasons. There's a lot of very nice things here. You gotta come to Oahu to get everything. Everything being an exciting city, as well as a variety of natural attractions. Breathtaking beaches, majestic mountains, the countryside is truly gorgeous. It's no wonder that Oahu is the most populated island and definitely the most visited of all the Hawaiian islands. Get yourself up those hiking trails. There are many natural sights to see you will never see from the road if you really want to breathe the Hawaiian air. Talking to the people, the native people, and just being real open because they're very open to visitors as a rule. You've heard of taboos, right? Superstitious beliefs? The misconception is they result in something negative happening. In our islands, we call it kapu. A kapu's for the royalty or the ali'i were privileges. Privileges that they acquired doing good things. It affirmed their power, their authority, their mana, that they had earned this privilege by virtue of ruling and ruling in a good way. One benevolent king, Kamehameha I, rose to power in the early 1800s and unified the Hawaiian islands under one rule. Two Kamehamehas later, and a royal court was established in Honolulu. Today, you can visit Iolani Palace, the only official state residence of royalty in the United States. Aloha. Hello, aloha. For the people of Hawaii mm -hmm. and the friends of Iolani Palace, welcome. Imagine yourselves guests of state. Here in the Grand Hall is where you would have been ceremoniously received. Take a look around you and notice that it's not strictly Polynesian in architectural style. It's quite Western. And yet within the palace, there is a mixture of cultures so reflective of people of Hawaii. In palaces, sometimes they're so overwhelming that they almost feel cold. But yet here, there's a coziness and a warmth that uh -huh. I feel. The first ruler ever to go around the world the first king to travel to the United States of America. Our King Kalakaua, who was an elected king, in order to affirm his divine right to rule, decided he needed a couple to light torches during the daylight. And the people, they loved it because the fire became very festive. Ooh. This room was used for the specialists, the kahuna, of medicine, of herbs, of plants, all were invited here to conduct their rituals. Part of Iolani's history includes a revolution where revolutionists took over the Hawaiian government. There was so much anger in the nation among the, the citizens. They did not want to be annexed to America, but the queen did not want any Hawaiian blood shed. She always felt that the great government of the United States would see the injustice of what had happened and return the government to the Hawaiian people. Ah, we didn't want to be the 49th state anyway, because we knew the TV program Hawaii 49 wouldn't have a catch to it. 50 was better, Hawaii 5-0. The over, 
and under views of Oahu when we return. In all honesty, you can only see about 20% of any island from the ground. But in a Mauna Loa helicopter, not only can you learn how to pilot the helicopter, it's your magic carpet ride to any spot on any island. And yes, this is how I got my cool aerial shots. So be sure to bring a camera to capture highlights of Oahu's 597 square miles. Another way to get around is via railroad for a 13 mile round trip and restore diesel and steam trains. Engineer Carl, one heck of a ride. Thank you very much. <laughs> the first Hawaiian locomotive was used for sugarcane production. During the early 1800s, Honolulu, known as the Sheltered Harbor, became the most important shipping point in Hawaii. An influx of Western seamen, colonizers, and missionaries descended on Oahu, changing the face of Hawaiian history. In the 20th century, Hawaii's economy shifted from farming taro root and fishing to the development of sugar and pineapple plantations. The sugar was introduced by the Polynesians who came from South Pacific. The only thing was, that they didn't know how to process it into sugar. And then the first sugar plantation starts in 1825. The big five corporations will control everything about Hawaii sugar industry. If you want to talk cultural heritage, Hawaii's plantation village in Vaipahu reveals the real depth of story. When you hear the term plantation, I mean, for a lot of people, you think of enslavement. You know, the plantation system is what you call paternalism. So like a father, you don't pay for rent, you don't pay for medical services, you don't pay for food, uh, no fuel, water, turkey on Thanksgiving, Santa Claus on Christmas. The lighter skin color you were, the higher pay rates they got, all comes to light where people communicate. And that's why it'll eventually lead to unionization. The Big Five needed the labor force, so they start to bring in uh, people from many different countries. Uh, they brought in about 1,000 Norwegians, 1,000 Scots, 3,000 Russians, 8,000 Spaniards. But they always go back to the cheap labor market, which is in Asia. So then they brought in Chinese, the Indians, Filipinos, Japanese, Okinawans. Replicas of households for these diverse groups are on display in the village, showing how their individual cultures were preserved. And they all lived here. They lived in separate camps. These camps were located all over. Nobody had transportation back then, so basically you open the door, you're at the work site. What the men did is they cut a can, which is to cut the cane, and then the ladies would strip the dry cane leaves and they call it hole hole. The sugar plantation pioneers adapted and blended their way of life in true working harmony. I think we've become a showcase of the world, how people can get along with each other, yeah? different faces and early in the morning it's it's great for walking you see lots of people out and watching the sun come up over Diamond Head strolling on the beach and sometimes it rains overnight so it's all cleansed and refreshed the water is just so beautiful it just looks like blue emerald stone with all the beauty surrounding you here it's hard to imagine what happened slightly more than 65 years ago with Hawaii becoming the 50th state, U.S. military presence grew. The establishment of Pearl Harbor as a first-class naval base arose out of World War I. We know that on December 7, 1941, the Japanese launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, spurring the U.S. to enter into World War II. Four years later, on September 2, 1945, Japan signed its unconditional surrender on the USS Battleship Missouri, still resting in Pearl Harbor today. The National Cemetery of the Pacific lies in the Punchbowl Crater, commonly known as the Hill of Sacrifice. The first known use of this area was as an altar, where Hawaiians offered human sacrifices to pagan gods. The cemetery opened in 1949. At that time, when they went out to the various islands, Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, Okinawa, they started bringing the casualties back. The families were given the option for burial within the cemetery or to return to their hometowns in the mainland. More than 12,000 opted for burial here. 
Hey, we're standing before Lady Columbia. Behind me, she represents grieving American motherhood. The words written below her were written by Abraham Lincoln to a Mrs. Bixby who lost five sons during the Civil War. We have uh, more than 30 of these memorial plaques. Uh, and they're viewed annually, probably by at least maybe five million people who visit the cemetery. Our first burial in the cemetery was in section A, grave number one, which is an unknown that was killed during the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. Uh, the cemetery is the final resting place of more than 47,000 veterans and their dependents. Some aloha spirit when we come back. The aloha spirit is commonly known as a friendly sentiment. Symbol of aloha is the lei. For which the Hawaiian Islands are so famous. And so when we share aloha, literally what we're doing is sharing the essence of who we are in an unconditional way, making a connection to that person that came from the same source of creation that we come from. Aloha! Many would agree that sporting a Hawaiian aloha shirt is the perfect way to manifest aloha values, like openness, friendliness, and concern. True to form or not, wearing the shirt really does launch a thousand smiles. Aloha! Aloha! Welcome <laughs> to Bailey's Aloha Shirts. Ah, thank you for having me. Oh, anytime. This is unbelievable. Yeah, we have the world's biggest selection of Aloha shirts here, over 15,000 different Aloha shirts. And it's not boring like a white shirt or putting a noose around your neck. You can perform your job just as well without the noose around your neck and the meeting gets boring, you can imagine you're off in paradise and look at your shirt. <laughs> then over here we have two or three thousand shirts that are under ten dollars. Hey, why is this one ten dollars oh. and... The pink one's actually our most expensive shirt. Exceedingly rare photo print shirt and it's also what's called a back panel shirt. I'll show you the back. It's uh, oh, wow. I've only this is the only real example of this shirt that I've ever seen. This was this is a five thousand dollar shirt. Everybody loves coming in. The first words we hear are "Oh wow!" Mm. And my husband is wanting me uh -huh. to show you one of our favorite <laughs> customers in our picture. What's the new trend? Well, the new trend for quite a while is to uh, copy the old uh -huh. Golden Age shirts. Uh -huh. At that time, they really, really put their heart and soul into to making a great shirt. For a million dollars, you can take it all. <laughs> take the <laughs> no, shirt right off the back. There's no place like Hawaii where you will feel that spirit as soon as you get off the plane. Aloha. Welcome to Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, hello, how are you? Let me give you a kiss on the cheek. Respectably, uncle, auntie, even though they're not a part of your family, it is all about family here on Oahu. Yeah, you're on your way. Yeah, this, oh, that's great. If Aloha were a musical voice, it would be the ukulele. Well, the ukulele came from like, a ship from Portugal that came to Hawaii carrying a, a lot of workers for the pineapple fields as well as sugarcane fields. A man named Joao Hernandez came off the ship playing this Portuguese instrument, and to the fellow Hawaiian locals, his fingers looked like jumping fleas, hence the name ukulele. Sounds to me like you have a love affair with ukulele. This strange thing has been happening to my insides. As I start to get into, into it by doing these things, tuning it up, practicing strumming. Lo and behold, I find that I'm starting to get this attraction and the attraction slowly develops into such a, such a passion and a love for this instrument. This passion seems to be contagious for each ukulele is crafted by loving hands. Each piece of koa, He'll determine where in the wood is the best part of the ukulele, like a, like a, where maybe a good face or make a great back or a nice side wood. The koa is nice and soft. It's actually very flexible. And this will become the hip of the ukulele. It'll be right here. And then the rest of the bend, the top and the butt bend of the ukulele is all done by feel. Huh. And then you have that. 
The technique itself is actually not too hard to uh, teach. It's just finding your own rhythm is where it's pretty hard. Our ukuleles are actually strong enough to stand on. Ukulele, as nice as it looks, unless it sounds uh, beautiful, then there's no point in it at all. So when uh, it goes out into the store, Papa himself can stand behind every single instrument that goes out. Well, first the ukuleles must pass Alvin's intonation rhapsody recital. Then it's on to the Koaloa ukulele concert. Aloha spirit makes everyone want to celebrate, and the luau is Hawaii's traditional celebration. And every successful luau has two components. Lots of good food. That's poi. Okay. Poi is made from the root of the taro plant, and that's all poi is. You just cook taro mashed with water. Taro and taro, right? Mom, this is the biggest poi we get. I've never been to a luau. I, I wasn't really very hungry and lots of great entertainment. So in other words, it's a big party. Oh, yes. <laughs> Accompanied by music, song, and dance of the islands, hula is the soul of Hawaii, expressed in motion. In ancient, ancient Hawaiian, the men were the one who danced the hula and not the women. Is that true? Yes. Oh, I have yeah. a little discrepancy about that. <laughs> Every movement and gesture in hula has a specific meaning, and every expression of the dancer's hands is significant. It's much like the oral tradition of passing down stories. Every luau offers a different variety of traditional Hawaiian fare. It's guaranteed that you will not leave a Hawaiian luau hungry for anything. Surf's up when we come back. Vestiges of Hawaiian history are found throughout Oahu, but one of the most recognizable rides in on a surfboard. Anywhere there was a body of water, people in essence, surfed in some form or way, but only in Hawaii. Everybody wants to claim it, but only in Hawaii was stand-up surfing done. Everyone surfed in Hawaii, everywhere. But as soon as the chief was coming, everyone had to go home. Koa surfboards primarily used by chiefs. And when they were taken out of the forest, those particular trees, there were sacrifices given to it. You know, and you're asking for the gods to, you know, open the door and start to give you the knowledge. There's, there's not very many of these boards around. Though I'm using modern equipment, it doesn't change the fact that everything's constructed in a traditional manner. I don't use any templates. There, there isn't one board that's identical. It's every one of them is, is different. Most popular activity? Surfing. <laughs> and surfing doesn't just have to be for the young whippersnappers, right? No, all ages. How good do you have to be to surf here? Uh, <laughs> depends how big it is. Such a powerful wave that if you underestimate it, it'll bite you in the butt, <laughs> pretty much. This history of surfing wasn't relegated to just men either. I mean, most of our old chants and stories, they're actually about the females because they had all the time in the world to go surf. The men would come upon them and go, oh, I'm in love with you, you know, look how beautiful she is, naked, surfing across these beautiful waves on, on these boards between 16 foot and 27 feet long and seven inches thick. That's really big. Baby, <laughs> let's go surfing. Let's go surf, Hello. girl. I hope you like this. Surfing a native-made board will provide you with the humbling experience of trying to ride the board in the ritualistic way Native Hawaiians did. So what prayer do we say when we go? Come on, the I survived. <laughs> when you're visiting Diamond Head on the island of Oahu and you're looking for the place where the locals gather for that something something diamond head cove health bar 
this is the place to come. Am I right? So this is a gathering hall for, for locals and tourists alike. So we got to pick me up here, or...? Actually, uh, this is called, Hawaii. well, it's Ava. It's uh, better known throughout the world as Kava. It's, it's a way to relax and unwind, you know. We stir it like so, and then we sprinkle a little on the ground because we want to give thanks to uh, the ground where it came from because it's a sacred root. And then we also want to sprinkle a little bit behind where your spine is because your spine represents your ohana, the people of the past that has gone before you. And give thanks to them as well. Mahalo keakua. And that's to give thanks to the god Lono or to the gods and say, hey, thanks for a special root that you provided for us. Well, thank you. Is that you and your dog in that picture? That is. That's Pono. <laughs> the surfing dog? The surfing dog. So you want to leave it all behind and come to this Hawaiian island and all it has to offer? Then say aloha to the richness of experience that is Oahu.